the Bible to the cross from the cross. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's law. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible as one story is holy enough in our lives. Day 196, Micah 427, Zion Resort of Glory. Micah declared a wonderful plan that in the holy city where God's justice and laws overflowed, Israel would live at his people. First point, Micah proclaimed of the new kingdom of the Messiah. The kingdom of the Messiah was explained by God. It was to be established on God's decided day and also and on the decided day. The kingdom of the Messiah was for all nations. It was also one that contained God's judgment. It did not have any words and it had everlasting peace. God proclaimed this kingdom and how it would be given to those who remained. God explained that those who persevered through the Babylon captivity would be able to experience the Messiah's kingdom. God would console these people. Second point, the Magi were able to find out the place of the Messiah's birth through the record of Micah. To South Judah, who tried to resist the attack of the Assyrian army, Micah delivered God's message of the birthplace of the Messiah, which was to be a small town called Bethlehem. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrata, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler of Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Later on, the Magi were able to find out the birthplace of Jesus through this record. By seeing a star, the Magi knew that the king had been born, and so when they asked the King Herod where the king had been born, Herod asked the priests and the teachers of the law. As such, Micah and Isaiah pre-told the birth of the Messiah. Thus, the Old Testament is the story of Jesus Christ and the framework of the four Gospels. All the 66 books in the Bible is Jesus' one story, the story of Jesus' crucifixion. Micah went on to explain how Jesus would be born in Bethlehem, and then he would save the entire world. At the time, South Judah had to be punished for their sins. But the reason for telling them this was in hopes that they might repent and turn to God. God's management of the world, which was detailed by Isaiah, was confirmed again by Micah. Third point, the Messiah would come and purify the world from idol worship. God told Micah that the Messiah would govern the whole world. God furthermore, promised that he would restore South Judah through those who remained. As such, God's interest in the remaining people knew no end. God, moreover, said that the Messiah would purify the world. The Messiah would purify the world from idol worship and from wars. God proclaimed that all would be renewed on the day that the Messiah came. On that day of judgment, the people would not be able to protect any of their possessions. All they would be able to do is to turn to God and ask for His protection. God governs the whole world. This cannot be emphasized enough. Fourth point, Micah outlines the faults of South Judah in detail. Now, it was Micah's last message. This message contained Micah's rebuke of people's sins. Here, God was the judge and the people were up for trial. The witnesses were the mountains and the land. First, God spoke, My people, what have I done to you? How have I burdened you? Answer me, 
I brought you up out of Egypt and redeemed you from the land of slavery. I sent Moses to lead you, also Aaron and Miriam. My people remember what Barak king of Moab preached and what Balaam son of Beor answered. Remember your journey from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the righteous acts of the Lord. God referred to Exodus and the instant of Barak and Balaam to reveal his righteousness. God furthermore told the people that they only worshipped him on the surface. To the people of South Judah who misunderstood God, God explained all that he had done for them up until now. What God wanted was for them to be at peace with their neighbors and not to be arrogant. Offering for the sake of offering was not what God wanted. He wanted them to practice true holiness in their everyday lives. Fifth point, Micah praised God by singing that there was none other like him. God lamented over the arrogance of the people of South Judah to Micah. God lamented over their arrogance, the leaders, and the fall of the relationship between the people. When Micah heard this, he repented on behalf of the people. God heard this and then promised again that he would restore them after their punishment. Micah's prayer continued, Shepherd your people with your staff, the flock of your inheritance which lives by itself in a forest, in fertile pasture lands. Let them feed in Bashan and Gilead and in days long ago. This was Micah asking God the shepherd to protect his land. Micah also offered God praise. Micah sang that there was none other like God. God granted the people of South Judah the blessing he had granted Abraham. I am thrilled that you have downloaded the Tondoc app. The Tondoc app is not like any other app in the world today as well as in the body of Christ today. Dr. Biyongo Zhou has devoted his entire life to teaching men and women like yourself to understand the entirety of the Word of God as a masterful and beautiful story from Genesis to Revelation. Dr. Zhou is a sought-after speaker worldwide. He's a cutting-edge pastor and leader. He is a renowned theologian and a prolific writer. And you're going to be equipped and energized like never before to understand and apply the Word of God into your life. Again, thank you for downloading the Tondoc app.